Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tino, you know, the Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Onega Lover. But, we need to talk about the winds of change. We're not at war yet with the Kurds because of some reasons, but, anyways, Vasily have been attempting to understand for the past few minutes Ivan was politically informed, especially for a fisherman in Siberia, but every time he went into a new s nuance of the Tom's political system, he only felt more hopelessly lost. Wait, Ivan, explain that again. He cut in, rusting his fishing rod against the side of the boat. He says there are four men in Tomsk, and they meet at Salon and argue, but what if they don't agree about something? Do they just keep arguing with one another? And what if the two of them agree on something, and the other two disagree? Ivan was taken aback, but trying not to let it show on his face, he nuzzled further into the folds of his coat. Well, they also disagree about how to break the tie, he started with some authority. One of them, Bainberg, thinks that only artists should decide on the fate of the country. So he sticks to his opinion, even when he's outnumbered. Sakharov is the same, but he thinks that only scientists should decide. Vasily was peering at him with naked suspicion. Ivan sped up a bit, and the others are similar. Like a job, that's a December's one. He thinks we should all be farmers, so that's what he says in the salon. And whenever the others disagree, he gets into a real temper and calls them enemies of the farmer. And Harms, the fisherman, faltered. For a second, they blinked at one another, hearing only water lapping in the boat and the wind. Ivan shrugged. I don't, don't properly know what Karms wants, Vasily, but I know if he's in the salon as well, and that he argues with the best of them. Ivan was not a cynical man, but when he tried explaining things to Vasily, he discovered that he was less informed than he thought. How can four men in the salon decide the fate of Russia? Also, we can do this one as well. We haven't been able to go to war with yet because, well. We don't control the Far Eastern stuff, but we did all the preparation stuff, but we only got to 60%. What happened? I don't understand. I'm literally just sitting here waiting for these guys, because I did a tab, tab over here. What the heck? They have no culture in this part in the Far East. What? What? Wait, what happened? Wait, what? Do we not just see this unhappy face? Hold on. Am I going... I don't know what's going on. It just I think these guys will declare war on us eventually. They're taking a long, long, long time to do so, but hopefully it'll happen soon. And soon is now in which I've already actually we didn't go to war with them. They went to war with us, so they've already lost twenty thousand people, twenty three thousand. And we're just gonna push in. We'll do the best we can. Supplies gonna be pretty crappy from here on out probably. But overall, not bad. We need way more attack helicopters, which is gonna be a little bit of an issue later on. We need to transport helicopters, close air support, and we got the hydroelectric station. Very cool. Also, surely aid in our efforts. Way more construction speed, infrastructure construction speed, and needed consumer's goods goes down. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, promote the elites. Yeah, we, d we have to do that one just because I forgot that our one of our national spirits here. Bureau of in Integration increases cynicism and decreases political outsiders, which is, you know, not bad. Not great, but not bad. So overall, this is really easy. And, you know, I can enjoy it. Sometimes you just have to have things that are easy. But yeah, but I definitely we definitely need more attack helicopters. It's not good. Not good, sir. Not good. Cool. Anything over here? You moving in? That's good. Um, what is their supply like? Let's or stock They got plenty of manpower. They got five factories. Oh, we got better agricultural methods. Oh, now we're on modern agriculture. Something like that. Yeah, modern agriculture. More multi-population, recruitable population factor, army regain factor, societal development progress. They have up to thirty divisions too. Um, looks like they're out of stuff except for support equipment, maybe some IFVs, some tanks, which. And then a few trains, but not that many trains. Overall, oh, they have seven now. Seven factory. Oh, look at this. Air stuff, yay. Oh, more gas. Way more gas. Ooh, more output. Yes, please. My goodness, we're going to need that. By 1970, my friends. 1970. Better attack alleys. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get that GDP. Our debt GDP ratio is not great. We can lower it. Business tax income. Income tax rate. Um, we could do that. We have a lot of debt, but honestly, just because we have a lot of divisions and such. Hmm. Hmm. Less growth. Yeah, we'll do it anyways. Oh, that's not bad. It doesn't help us out that much, but it does help us out a little bit, so. Engineers are good. Let's grab some more stuff from 1970. More stuff to tech, thank you. I hope you guys have a pretty good day. I'm doing okay myself. The goal is to get pushed all the way pretty much to Magadon, or Magadon, and which doesn't really matter. Oh, airbase. Oh, actually, what does that one read like? The skies are ours. Better pro fighter production costs, reliability, interceptors. Oh, okay. Interceptors we don't really use this. I don't ever really, really use them. I don't really like them that much, but whatever. And region development. Please, please, please. We've got plenty of command power. <coughs> Excuse me. 30 production units. Not enough. Oh, advanced development of subsidies. Oh, baby, yes. Improve worker training. This is good for industrial expertise and industry stuff. Minus 0.38 still for poverty rate change. And we're still at 42% poverty rate. For expertise, we're already on innovative industry. So doing that one wouldn't really help that much. 
but that slight bonus to expertise is not bad. And you might be able to increase some other stuff versus in construction, which we're just building up roads. Which is okay, it's not bad. So, I w it's only 20%, we're still going to grab it anyways, why not? I have my points, very good. 20 billion, 8% growth, not bad. You know, test that's not good, but whatever. We have about 7,000 versus 170,000. Anything else here? Can you guys actually win? Uh, yeah, maybe. Supplies actually is not an issue. Rangers, nice. He's a ranger, that's very good. Over here. Supplies looking, yeah, not terrible. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not much further, not that much further. Expand the university system. Ah, invested construction. We don't have that many now. I want to make sure we max it out. Just keep building, 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 building. If you want to help out here, that'd be fine with me. I mean, these guys are not terrible. They're not bad. They could be better. But yeah, with uh, these planes on them. Air, planes. Helicopters. I love aerosol companies. Look at all that breakthrough. 136 more breakthrough. A good amount of soft attack. A good amount of heart attack. It gives you recon as well. You also need some fuel for them, but that's okay. And more defense. Piercing is really good as well. Like, 101 piercing. That's really... That's not bad. Hey, truckies. Hey, just keep going this way. All the way over. There goes Yemen. Goodbye, Yemen. We want the elites, because we have to. Um, we have 2.4 every single day. That's pretty nice. Ooh. More air stuff? Oh, yes, please. More... Uh, what, by helicopter, what do they mean? They do mean air assault. And air attack helicopter companies. Nice. Oh, do we actually... Do you, you already got there? Holy crap. Dude. Nice job. Um, actually, just don't get encircled, though. Report to the outside world. Now, if we do that, does that give us more money if we actually have a port? Hmm. Let's we'll see. There you go. That's good. Nice. There you go. I don't actually want you to go there. I want you to go there. Thank you. And I should give up very soon, but still. Let's see. Nice. Just keep grinding out that army XP. And the air XP? Not bad either. Um, since you're here. Oh, yeah, go all the way down there. That'll be good. And. Was that 20? 10% more. I thought it was 30% more at one point. Might have been. Academic base is going up very quickly. We're going to go beyond primary schooling. We're already on cutting edge research. So we're on cutting edge research, we're on modern agriculture. We do have a functional administ administration as well, but it's not going to probably go up beyond that one. Uh, we have innovative industry. So, and we won. So, and we're on professional army too, but which is not the maxed out one, but whatever. But yeah, this is actually really good. Like, we're actually pretty darn advanced. All right, so let's buy this. We'll go down here, do that, stuff like that. Because, as you can tell, these guys are doing so great. These guys are really not doing so great. Actually, you probably just right there. Cool. And how's Samara doing? N what? How do they have not buy any production units? Oh my goodness. Ah, they've been worried about that one place great as well. Yay. Oh god, we have to get, uh, integrate all these places now. I'd rather import heavy machinery. What's equipment like? Uh, well, we're going to lose it anyway, so. We can get these guys later on, and let's do Siberian Reunification. The Siberian Republic was born, my friends. Um, if you want to go into the Atomic Age, please go right ahead. Boom. Yay. To the east, the Azure Eternum. We have reached the Pacific Ocean. We are even closer to reuniting Russia. Our prospects of victory have greatly increased, and we have shown the world we are truly a major force in Russia. Finally, no longer landlocked, we can begin to orchestrate trade across the ocean and finally bring foreign riches into Siberia. That's a major achievement for the Bastillards, especially. Our plan of free trade across the Pacific is finally possible. We have not just brought democracy to the Far East, but great wealth as well. Awesome. I don't want to do that one. Ah, uh, we want to integrate these places. Integration, integration. Um, let's do... Of course, could be good to do. Economy-wise, that's a lot of growth. We still have a yearly deficit, but it's green. What is the difference between green and red here? Increase in our GDP growth as long as it continues. So I think green is just a safe amount of deficit. Red is bad. Deficit is often superior to surplus, also expand our economy greatly. Color the text, but a high deficit cannot lead to extreme debt. There goes De Gaulle. Um, why can't we raise our credit rating anymore? I think going up to acceptable would probably be okay. Fair is okay, but I think it'd be better if we just went up to acceptable. Oil crisis, not a problem. 
Got a lot of manpower now, which is nice. Build roads. I mean, we're not going to build all these eventually, but that's fine. Whatever. 31 production units. Not enough. But what else is new? What else is new, you know? Italy is now nuclear power, which we're going to try to catch up to. Northern Serbia. Oh, after this one. Oh, admin efficiency will passively improve, which means it probably goes up like very little. I'm not sure how much it actually goes up by. 0 0.01 more growth. Get a core in Kamchatka. We lose stability, physical power, GDP growth, which sucks. Um, what is admin efficiency right now? It currently goes up by 1.55. So in a little bit, when we see Arkutsk 1.55, we'll see how much damage it actually does. Oh, that's not good. So actually, if you're about a brute academic base, please go right ahead. Nice. We could save a little bit of money, maybe, but uh, you know what? At this point, it doesn't really matter too much. Let's not. I'm not going to convert these divisions over. I'll convert them when we are waiting to go to war with the Germans. So that'll be fine. The Red Hinterland. The legacy of communism is especially seen in Akutsk and Baratia. It is a vast allowed duty to remove these red stains and ensure supplies can move freely between our ports and cities. Partisans and resistance movements must be snuffed out as quickly as possible before they spread and gain strength. Once we stabilize the control, we'll be able to enact plans. No banner will reach your trade routes. The League establishes their case. It seems the independents have once again begun to attempt to down our a republic to unique democracy, this time targeting the restricted voter pool, which is one of the main tenets of Tomskian democracy, created to give more privileges to the educated to vote on more practi practical and important matters. It allows the intelligentsia a larger say in the government. While the voting bloc is technically open to all who pass the entrance exams, the League for Expanded Democratic Rights, made up of mostly independents, has decried the special voting pool as undemocratic and has mounted a legal case in favor of abolishing the voter pool. They say all people deserve the same vote, no matter their education. Well, it may sound sensible at first. The voter pool is very important. <clears throat> for passing Act's constitutional design, and it's one of the very ideals of our republic. Eliminating it could very well lead to the end of the Salon system. Still, many citizens are supporting the move that the League is making, especially people of the newly integrated provinces. The case is expected to head to the Supreme Court, despite its lack of legal basis. Judges of lower courts will have issued inconsistent rulings, and and, this, and while this could, case could seem small at first, it may very well lead to the fall of our republic's unique democracy. Tomsk awaits its fate. Mm, and we're... So, oh, 0 0.91. So it went up by like, what, 0.36? Maybe 0 0.3, 0.4-ish, roughly? Supreme Court listen to listen to argument against a restricted voting category. Tom, today the Supreme Court has made a decision to hear the court uh, case brought forth by the League for Expanded Democratic Rights, which puts forth that the salon style of govern political governance is anti-democratic and fundamentally incompatible with the founding principles of the CSR. The League, primarily made up of citizens from newly conquered territories and those critical of the Salon system of political representation, has made significant gains in the past months, both membership and funding. Hmm. Most surprising to the, mo the most of the Salon establishment, many prominent humanists have made themselves available to the League, either as large researchers or even as representatives from other Salons, all in order to assist the case being brought forth by the League's legal case. I believe, said one, that is immoral for a group of citizens to be denied because their ideology is beyond the Salon style. For many, this is the first time that they've encountered such a structure, so it is completely understandable that they would seek something more representative of their needs. The exact court day is yet to be finalized, but many in Tomsk and throughout the rest of the Republic fear the political repercussions of the decision made by the Supreme Court regardless of the outcome. A democracy for the elite or a democracy for the people. What if we did this one? We would still have a deficit, which does lower GDP growth, which sucks, but that inflation is not bad. Holy crap. That's not bad at all. Um, approach immigrant scientists. Um, that's okay. I do want to do one of these, but listen against listen to argument against restrictive voting category. Today's Supreme Court has decided to hear the case put forth by the League for Expanded Democratic Rights of the Salon System, a traditionally sacred cow of the CSR, is incompatible with democratic values. The League, which has had a hard time making itself popular with its citizenry and its, with its membership roles, have minimal expansion and mild supply of funding. To many, the Republic, in, in the Republic, the idea of getting rid of the Salon System of Governance is shocking. I don't think it was real, began 34-year-old Chudov Nikolaevich, a long-time member of the modern Salon. I mean, how else can we prevent so-called friends of the people from undermining our civil rights? In spite of its unorthodox style, the Salon has maintained its status as an important element of the Republic, while, or with many of the inca incapable thinking of the nation otherwise, even many of the leagues, such as organizer Serovarov Alexeyevich, think that while the Salons are comp competent and popular, <coughs> although critical of the undemocratic and immoral idea that without the, those without Salon backing do not have a role in government, so far, few are expected to closely follow the trial. A democracy for the people, by the people? Takeli is nice. We need way more. Way more of these guys, too. We need more production needs in general. Oh, a rookie system. Um, 
Today, the Supreme Court's given its final vote on the leak for expanded democratic rights today in favor of the special voting blocks, seeing that the salon status requirement for ballot access is fully constitutional, and thus the majority of the plaintiff's case has been rejected. Many in the league are disappointed with the decision, but many report that the outcome was, of course, expected. We don't have... <clears throat> Do we just don't have the public or constitutional support, really, said one anonymous staffer, we were always going to lose. In spite of the most central point, that being the special voting blocks is within the constitutional bounds, the Chief Justice's speech has drawn the most attention among the League supporters and the Salon loyalists, uh, stating that, if you're wondering about better additional equipment, please go ahead, this republic. This republic is based upon values of democracy and an all-encompassing freedom. That is why we must do better, must do more, must never stop listening to its citizens, regardless of political belief or lo prior loyalty, and only then will democracy flourish as it has around the world. It then argued for expanding the voter pools, with a specific eye towards the legislative and executive branch. A nation of order, stability, and a nation of progress or reform, both are necessary elements of a healthy state of political life. I apologize for the fade and fade outs, but we're on now modern industrial equipment. Uh, uh, the game crashed for me, um, so that's why we fade and fade out, so... Yeah, the game literally just crashed, so... Oh! 371, we can prepare for the war. Totally didn't forget about that. Cheetahs is next, because that's a lot of population there. So, yeah. Ooh, yeah, we've got one first. We don't want to rush these, probably, just because... Ooh, they lose... Ooh, we get political power? I mean, we don't really need... Yeah, we could probably get that. Use that immediately. Um, I don't want to rush through these, just because, like, last time we didn't get that much. You remember that? Please go ahead. A free and open discussion. And if you want to read about this one, please go ahead as well. Actually, where are we off for research? Minus 0.35 is still really good. Actually, it's not bad. Um, after this one, we'll probably do a foundation for research as well. Begin to improve? Nice. Pietro wrote furiously as the debate got ruling in the Duma. It had been a busy couple of weeks with all the constitutional discussions and court cases going on, but even in spite of that, the editor wanted him to stick to Duma reporting. Typical, Peter thought. So it wasn't all that boring. The debate just didn't deal with basic moderate stuff or with the founding principles of the Republic. But, uh, but on the nature of their place in the constitutional structure of government. What many asked was the purpose of an upper house. The answers to such questions range from the humanist ideals of protecting freedom and the working man to the vast large cynical hatred of populism. Towards the end of the debate, one representative, a humanist, took the proverbial microphone going to the dais and, gi and giving a speech to his fellow members. Friends, comrades, I speak to you not only as a representative of the humans, but as a loyal patriot and citizen of the CSR, or Central Siberia. And I believe in the liberties of mankind. I speak to the belief that all men are created equal, and that any man willing to take away those fundamental liberties is an enemy of the people. That is why we are doing, or what are we doing? Protecting the people from the will of despots who would wish to take away their freedoms. But that alone cannot protect us, for it is only when the people lose their faith in democracy, in our constitution, and our, and, and, in our institutions, that such men can ever even take power. Without faith, that our leaders have our best interest at heart, why would the people listen to us? The chamber went quiet, even Peter Spence stopped scribbling looking down at the young man. I believe in a nation before Salon. Any honesty, well-meaning attempt to improve the faith of the men and women in this nation is something I support, regardless of which side of the aisle they may be on. Many of my eyes would agree with that sentiment. The man left the dais, but the noises did not reappear. Crap, did I get all that down? Cool. That to GDP ratio? We still have a really, really deficit, but less than 1%. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. And I want to get through these ones first, because we have... Plenty of time. Oh, we got three more. Ooh. Also, like earlier, like off screen, I would, when I was waiting to go to the war, I made sure that we have a lot. Of, we command authority like crazy. Good amount of popularity. Good amount of upper seats. Overall, not bad. This is weird. Anyways. Um, academic base. We'll do that one first just because I want to improve academic base. That's, that's important to do, so. Nice. Hobbins, Doc Legacy. Hobbin has a stock legacy in the Far East. The center of Russian fascism. These groups thronged in Russia to destabilize and enslave the Russian people. Fascism must be removed from the Far East, for we can allow radical ideologies to tarnish our republic. Eliminating fascism from outer Manchuria will also secure the ports, as we cannot have fascist resistance hurting our business efforts. It is also important we conduct business in our, bon our bin, and we must have ties with Japan so we do not rival them in the Pacific. A neutral relationship will be, of course, the best. And we're going to wait to do this one too, because I want more research facilities as well. Because even though we're on cutting edge research, actually, you know what? That doesn't even matter. But getting more daily progress would be good as well. But whatever. Uh, let's let's pour more stuff first. Actually, no. So 84 in development. I want more daily progress. That'd be good. Also, couple com com comments include: Can we try the various sides out of the West African War? I mean, I'd like to, but I don't think there's that much content for them currently right now. I mean, there might be a little bit, but I don't think there's very much at all. So, yeah. If there was more, I definitely would. Uh, let's see, over here. 1970s, we're good, we're good. No, it's fine. Oh, we have armor trains too. Oh, that probably would be good to get. Yeah, let's grab those. Cool. And more production units? Oh, yes, please. How are we building? I want to 
10 is pretty good. I mean, compared to everything else that we have. We're going to need way more military factories for just in general. The sword. If anyone were to look at the facade of the cinema theater in the Siberian Republic, dazzling lights or dazing lights would be blinding the poor assault who laid his eyes on the myriad of neon lights set up for the screening of Shield and Sword, the movie adaptation of Koznikov's espionage novel. Truly, this adaptation could be called a massive success as people were seen reaching the street corners. Though the book managed to awaken a slight feeling of national pride in its readers, the movie managed to broaden its impact. Perhaps even setting it ablaze even more so as countless citizens inspired by the movie and its protagonist struggles against the Nazi Reich, no doubt, start enlisting in the service of the Republic. For the motherland needs all of its children to defend it from the further ravages carried out by Germany. Where does the motherland begin? It begins in the head. I want to get some more preparedness first before we do that. The Dark Legacy, Foundation for Research, Any Port in the Storm. Actually, that one's okay. We don't really have to do that one. We get more daily monthly progress gain, though. So, which is actually really nice. Yeah, it's oh, better industrial expertise, but at the same time, we're already on innovative industry, so we got all that stuff done already. Uh, let's have some first. Ending Hobbin's legacy. Every last fascist party member and sympathizers being located and put through the dehobbinization process, or trials at the very moment. Mandatory classes are being taught to more moderate people on the evils and lack of freedom brought by fascism and monarchism. Every last vestige of authoritarianism with tendency will be wiped off the face of the Far East, even if we have to use rather authoritarian means. Some of the most radical among the local populace are being forcibly sent to re-education camps, and many people are being put on government lists, but these extreme circumstances mean we must reluctantly resort to these extreme measures. It's sad that we have to no choice but to violate some of our principles, but it's absolutely necessary for the safety, stability, and eventual prosperity of our republic. Any port in the storm. Magadan is our only lifeline to the outside world, but being the only major port under control in the Far East. We must build more roads, bridges, and railways if we want Magadan to be as effective as possible, allowing us to transport goods and trade at a faster pace. Upgrading the port itself by building more docks and using new technologies would be necessary if we want Magadan to be useful. Okay. Anti the Atomic Age miscellaneous costs. Nice. Actually, is anyone suffering from supply issues right now? Yes, we are, which is not good. Um, this kind of sucks. You know what? How about we just like kind of all gather around here first? Because up here is going to be god awful. I'm glad I looked at this before we actually did anything else. Um, yeah, it's really bad right there. There, it's going to be really bad just overall, anyways. But infrastructure, railways. There you go. Let's do that. Supplies are just so bad. Yeah, we'll do any port in the storm with foundation for research. But if you like to about addressing the uranium problem, please go ahead as well as expand the Siberian mines and source raw materials and chase the sun. Please go right ahead. But this one. Even our, with our improvements to Magadan, the port will never be as good as Vladivostok or any other port in outer Manchuria. To get a more robust trade network with the outside world, we must expand our diplomacy and political strength. The negotiations will be difficult, but the failure could jeopardize the entire economy and prepare for Western positions. We must be ready for war in the West. While the government there may be perhaps willing to negotiate with us, which it's not, it's much better to be safe by preparing for war. Developing local areas along the border and planning future campaigns must be done now before it may be become or may be too late, which we got 10 days until we're going to go to war. So, let's see, anything else here? Daily stuff, daily stuff, just do it all. So we got enough political power at this point, it doesn't even matter. 2.7 every day is pretty good. The new Pacific policy. To bring our project up off the ground, a new ministry will be created to oversee it. Uh, integrated it, integrate it into the government. Name the Ministry of Trade and Defense. It will focus solely on trade operations in the Far East and the Pacific as well as the defensive convoys and trade lines. Finding this new ministry will hopefully bring the right people to the table and progress our plans. Which is very, very good. As we want to reunify Russia, we're managing development. A uh, cynicism crisis. Here, promote the elites. It's fine. Yay, we went to war with them all. Because supply is so bad here, we're still trying to build this, up, build this area up. But it shouldn't be that bad, in all honesty. Um, free aviators, can we just go in? Yeah, we can, that's fine. Can we do anything against these guys? Oh, we went to war with literally all of them, which is fine, whatever. Here, just take them out that way. Let's literally just go on in. If you can. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cool. See what you can do. They de These guys literally just beat Omsk, so... Uh, overall, they have... There's a lot of divisions over here. Oh, nice. 15. Uh, your league has the most divisions out of everybody. Okay. Expand the state wealth... State welfare state? Yeah. Ooh, oh, way more costs. Get more stability. Poverty gets better. Need to get some goods goes up. More stability. Poverty rate begins to improve. 
Nice. With the economy growing, we can accommodate better social welfare and civilian-oriented policies. Let's focus on this to satisfy the everyday citizens as will act as an outflow for anger against our government. Just pay them off. There we go. Let's build better. <clears throat> As my voice is cracking like crazy. Oh boy. Am I going through puberty again? God, I hope not. I really hope not. Alright. Uh, I'd advise you guys going here too just because it's really bad right now and I need you guys to give it extra support right there. There we go. It's looking a little better now. Alright. Anything else? It is only September. Um, grab some better cast maybe. That'd be good. Probably. Oh, we get into it so good already. Nice. Uh, so you guys are just training so don't do that anymore. And go right there. <clears throat> That'll be nice. That'll be very good. Help him out here, too. How are we losing here? I guess I got quite a few divisions, but still. Nice. We've lost 5,000. We've got 24,000. They have 32 divisions. Okay. These guys have 32 divisions. Which, I mean, they're going to be strong regardless. They have one production unit. They have 7,000 manpower in reserve. Um, never mind. 4,000. And these guys have so much manpower, it's ridiculous. Up to 15 divisions, including some militia. Alright then. We have a mission in the National Redoubt. Well, alright. Final round of preparations. Nice. Military professionals will begin to improve as well. What is this? Um, ah. Bastler government has decided to launch a great project in the National Redoubt. This ambitious program aims to circumvent the loss of strategically crucial Manchuria to the Japanese by developing a remaining port such as Magadan, improving the connections of the central Siberia to the Far East, and crucially negotiating with the Japanese for access to Manchurian industries. The Trinity Group has determined that access to foreign markets is crucial in the development of the Russian Republic, and that trade must be secured and protected no matter the cost. It's a great undertaking, and citizens observe it with interest. Fear to bring about a successful completion of the plan could have negative uh, consequences for the people's trust in the government. The current progress towards completion is 0%. Monthly progress is 0.5. Expand the port of Magadan. Fortify the eastern coast. Ooh, military professionals begin to improve. And increases death by crazy, but that's alright. The Petrov Salon expansion of industry. And totally Petrov stood on the street outside the Duma and Tom's. Couldn't realize how long it had been since he had last seen it. Before joined the military, at least. It seemed like an eternity ago. Before his eyes had been opened to the narrowness of the view promised by each salon, before each had developed. For he had developed his own true moral center. He felt more peace than ever, and in truth, the ability to avoid factional arguments, and his unit had earned him a rapid promotion to sergeant. But within his own family, he remained alone in this regard. His father had not been able to stop talking about the Bastelard's grand plan, and an enormous infrastructure corridor out of the Far East and the Pacific ports, as well as a rapprochement with Japan besides. It promised enormous industrial and economic expansion, but in truth, what did that mean? More production for weapons, a more efficient assembly line for war? He did not voice such thoughts to his father. He would not be able to understand and would argue against them besides. His mother and sister provided more than enough of that in any case. And he looked at the Duma for another long moment and then turned to leave. He knew that so much of what was said inside that building was irrelevant, and conflicts of those who could not see the flaws in their own position or the merits of the others. Much like his kitchen table, they both in instances, they in both instances only focus on the idea, and totally focus on the person affected by it. A solidified direction. A round of preparations. Conflict is nearing, and we have to be prepared. Men must be trained, better weapons must be distributed, and propaganda campaigns must be completed. This will be our most challenging fight yet. We can now lose if we wish to survive, or wish for democracy to survive. Oh, you guys gone. Nice. Good job, guys. A nation's future. Knock, knock, knock. Delivery for the family of uh, Vasily Antonovich. Hmm, Vasily wasn't expecting any mail at his home, but... The man outside was not a mailman. It was a low-level government bureaucrat. Good afternoon, sir. The government has begun a program of giving children free toys to help stimulate their development. Are your children home from school? They can come pick up a few things they like. Oh, uh, sure. Thank you. Luca, Liuba, come here. The government is bringing you toys. Huh. Confused, but also excited for toys. Uh, Vasily's two young kids immediately pop their heads out of the, from the front door and browse a to box of toys being carried out by the employees. Or by the employee. I want that one, yelled both children at the same time, picking in an action figure and picture book, respectively. After supper, Vasily and his wife watched. The two young children play with their new pr uh, presents with glee. They're both totally enamored and absorbed by the toys, so surely this was providing some benefit to their childhood? The new Bassler political program, or party, and the Salon government was awfully strange, but it seemed like they cared about making life bearable for the citizens. They couldn't be too bad. Luca and Liuba especially seemed to like the new government. Well, I bet they would. That didn't that end that bad. We just have a yearly deficit, whatever, it's fine. That is going up. But as long as we conquer all this territory, we'll be fine. How many have we lost? 30,000? 18,000 versus 100,000? Not bad. Actually, how many more divisions do they have? 24. It's not bad. And giving us plenty of army XP. Giving us plenty... Well, not plenty, but more. I would want, I would want even more. Fun round of preparations? Very good. Japanese bargains? 
Uh, Japan now holds their port old port of Vladivostok, which was once one of the best trading hubs in the empire. We must ask them if they can make use of, if we can make use of that port to trade and transport goods. We could also cross access to Manchurian railways, which would give us the ability to send goods over land faster. Yes, just going to acquire all this stuff. It's fine. Get it done. Get her done. We lost. Oh, uh, I don't think we had that originally, but whatever. Whee! All the way down, son. All the way down. And stop when you get there. Way less growth because we're trying to core more stuff. Hey, we actually have a surplus now. Not bad. Eh, whatever. Actually, does that hurt us? <clears throat> Not too badly. And then open the ports by any means. The current lack of, uh, of naval infrastructure makes trade a difficult and dangerous operation. The new Ministry of Trade and Defense will work to quickly construct and develop new ports and acquire ships. The legality of such an operation, considering the dubious ownership of the land, and up is up for a debate, but we can hardly afford yet another setback. The operation will have to go ahead. Nice. Minus 0.3 still? That's actually really strong. Okay, just keep going on now. Oil processing? Yeah, we're going to need a lot of fuel where we're headed, so it's fine. Hey, cut off. Nice. American trade. Oh, yes, please. Trade with America is absolutely critical if we want to have a strong economy. Well, I was going to trade in Magadan, and while they may not like conducting trade in a port that is frozen half the year, perhaps giving them a bit more peak in their will peak will peak their interests. Perhaps special treatment in our economy will do the trick. And actually, doing this will give us more admin efficiency and slightly more growth. Not much, but this is nice. A reaffirm Japanese cooperation. Ooh, increase the GDP. Monthly mega progress by 0.25. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Orkuta, yes please. All right, over here. Let's grab this one too. Light stealth technology. It's fine. Thank you. Yeah, with the AI not being able to respond to all these issues and stuff like that, it's actually really nice. Oh, we actually have chips. Oh, look at that. Well, at this point, it doesn't really matter. They're training definitely, because you can. On a sign? Okay then, whatever. Production units? Um, let's go two here. We'll go two and then go even five five more just because we need them. We need more arty, the uh, massacre over there, whatever, no one cares. Um, do we need more guns maybe? We need more attack helicopters and stuff like this, so. American trade? Yay! Special economic zones. Manchuria may not be the best place to operate, but it's better than the Far East, nevertheless. If we put our industries near the ports, the transportation of goods will go much faster and our economy will undoubtedly grow. Industrial equipment will begin to improve? Well, we do want to get to cutting edge industrial equipment, but I don't think we'll get there. You guys are looking not too bad. Almost seven a month is pretty good. It's pretty good. And we're probably losing a lot of guns. We need more tech alleys, of course, but still. We got plenty of already, actually. How much? How many guns do we actually have? Hundred thousand. It's pretty decent. What are we doing here? Five percent growth. You release a plus. It's very nice. Cut down that debt though. Nice. Very good. You guys go in there. Some extra help you can, y'all. Yeah. Get even more help. Hey, more air stuff. Good. ASW stuff. Let's go air defense. It's fine. <clears throat> nice. Anything else down here? Yes. Yeah, for American cooperation. For corporate. Cooperation, yeah. Monthly progress, 0.5. Breaking the salon deadlock. The deal with Japan has proven very unpopular with both the citizens of the Republic and most of the salons, however. There are those within one another salon that do un understand their motives. The humanists. Aligning ourselves with the humanist salon should hopefully give us a majority to pass all the necessary policies dealing with American and Japanese trade. Nice. There goes up there, your old league. We lost about 3,000 against these guys. They have up to 20 divisions max. Here, that's kind of actually really sad. Admin efficiency is looking like what? Seven a month. We actually might be able to get to uh, streamline bureaucracy eventually too. Which would even need better pocket switcher factor. Minus 0.27. I wish it was getting better than that, but whatever. Wow, that's not bad. Surplus is fine. Breaking the salon deadlock is fine as well. Invest 10 million. Oh, you bet we will. National Redoubt, we got to finish it by them, which we definitely will have it done by them. But now we got to talk about the West will be ours. To the West. Uh, Russians toil underneath their rival. Beyond that, the horror of the Reichskommissariat at Muscovine, where Russians die under the boot of the Germans. We will win the war in the West, liberating all Russians, and the Iron Republic of the Bastards will march 
to the gates of the Reich. And we'll have one more episode after this, so just so we can uh, do really well and smash the Germans. Have a massive military doing so. So, that'd be good. Reunification of Russia, nothing there yet. Cynicism crisis. I do that one. It's fine. Advanced cast, love it. We're doing that one already. Multi combat roll. Uh, helicopters, we already got going very well, which is awesome. Better supply consumption. We kind of already did that one too. Oh, did it? oh maybe not. That'd be good. Jet cast, advanced jet cast. No one got any seats, which is honestly okay with me. A yearly surplus of a billion dollars. A small loan. The thunderous of Parliament. There's no other choice. You would make the opportunities that exist or you fail to survive. I would be interested in hearing alternative plans for development, but I already know you have none. Harms, dry, stinging words hung briefly over the deputies in the Parliament before a deafening rabble consumed the entire room. Jeers and boos came from all over, including from, from opinionated bastards until Harms got enough over all the noise. It was incredibly rare that he got even a little flustered, instantly calming down. The President, of course, continued. Uh, actually, let's keep making sure we keep going on. Whee! All the way down there. Uh, I am no fan of the policies of the Empire of Japan myself, but it would be a grave mistake to ignore the massive economic boon we would experience by opening trade links with them. All we need to do is build venture and industry and expand our Pacific ports, and our republic will have an economy that eventually eclipses even that of Germany. It's impossible to act in a morally pure fashion at every single crossroads, and we have an obligation to ensure that we spread democracy and prosperity as far as wise we can. We need to finish this project to do that. And besides, you don't think Japan will find someone else to trade with if we don't trade with them? You're not that naive. The parliament was much quieter than before. The deputies heavily pondered what their president had said, but whether the Carm's Grand Eastern Development Project came fully to fruition was still up in the air. Will the plan be realized? Maybe. Just maybe. Ooh, even without a temp tax hike, we're still doing okay, yeah. 6% growth is not bad. Y'all, would y'all like to go in? No? Okay, so we lost all that territory. Well, maybe we didn't lose it, but... No, oh, actually, no, we got it. We kind of got it, actually. Orenburg would be nice to get, yeah. That should be very good to get. We're still trying to build up the stuff over there, too, so it kind of sucks. We got a lot of infrastructure that'll never be built, too. This conference is over. Oh. It's fine. Whatever. The less nations in the game, the better. The West, my friends, will be ours. We still have only 35% war support, which is not good. That's actually going to be really bad for us in the future. But whatever. Whatever. Hey, better plus. 5.7% growth. They left, like, it looks like they left Samar completely open. Oh god, oh god, no, I just wanted you, I just wanted you. Let's make a lot of divisions to do this. So we've killed off about 12,000, we got up to nine divisions left, we lost about 3,000 so far ourselves, not bad, not bad. What are we missing here? Oh, just high level of resistance, that's fine. Anything there? Oh yeah, we also preferred tactics, I forgot about that. Um I'm not really sure. Well planned attack. Overwhelming attack. Delay. Oh, that's assault. Strategic theorem, large front operations. I think for us. Oh, we'll wait for this stuff then. No chief of the army, none of these guys, that sucks. It's alright, that makes sense. Oh, Kazan. That would be nice. There's no way they can resist us there anyway, so. Why oh, would you look at that? More air stuff? Yes, please. Better fighter stuff? Yes, please. More production units? Oh, absolutely. Go five. Go five more. We need them. We absolutely need them. And we're going to increase this to at least five. And go there to two. Nice, we got Samara. Come on, guys, keep going. Don't give up yet. Right, go to Arkhangelsk. Hey, if you want to build even better, better, better research facilities, please go right ahead. Yeah, there's not much there for us. 7% growth, not bad. Where's the capital now? Oh, Ninsi Novgorod. That's fine. Got a lot of core after this war's over, though. You got plenty of grid power, though. It's very nice. Where are we for this? 7% a month. National readouts, almost 20%. Monthly progress gains, 1. Pretty good. Pretty good. Just let the time go on. I mean, they are, what, 90%? 85 per month? Oh. Okay. 84%. Okay. 
Yeah, the AI really struggles with winning wars now. It sucks for them. Oh well. Why do you guys just stop all of a sudden? Like, why? Why are y'all stopping? Because of supplies, maybe? Maybe. Hey, we got it. Then that should be it, right? Yes, sir. That should be good. Actually, if anything, yeah, I want only 79% is not good enough, but whatever. There we got them. Look at that, beautiful. And right now, here's the economy 6.7%. Surplus is 3.22 billion. Spend all your PP. And we don't have enough, whatever. Rush millennia. Uh, invest some money. It's fine as well. And let's reunify Russia. The Russian Republic returns. Of all the movements of Thompson, no one more shocked than the Basel or Salon. The Trinity Group was not known, well known for its moving art or uplifting up version of New Russia, but for its strange, ghastly, and surreal art presentations, for its dour vision of an industrialist, rigidly orderly, so rigidly ordered society, for its paranoia about the Republic's doom, or a public judged by many of its members to be doomed from the start to fall under populist -like tides. Now the Basel Society is admired for the prominent role in Russia's re resurrection. Under the leadership of President Daniel Combs, the Russian Republic has a prosperous economy. Its people labor incessantly to rebuild a nation stolen from them by the foreign invaders. And on the border with the Einheit's back, the men of the Republican army train. For the Republic to live, all external threats must be dealt with. Now, Combs is expected to lead his people into the long-desired endgame. The liberation of all Russians from foreign tyranny. Ah, okay mode. So, place free milk taps in every corner of Uruguay. And limit the working date at 15 minutes. What the heck? Volkisha Beobakta. Oh, that's kind of cool. I've never seen that one before. But at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and play until we get to the point where we go to war with the Germans in the next episode. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we won't explode the economy. And I'll be ready to take on the entire Ionites pack. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.